welcome or welcome to this session. Uh, uh, this session, uh, we're going to talk about breaking through cluster boundaries to auto scale workloads across them on a large scale. And this is uh, Xin Yan Jiang, uh, software engineer at Dow Cloud. And my name is Ying Zhang, I'm a software engineer at Zendesk. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to cover uh, the uh, HPA pod, uh, pod auto scaling and the benefit of auto scaling across clusters multi-clusters and uh, intro introduced to Kamada in the Kamada's features about uh, federated HPA and crown federated, federated HPA. Then we're going to do a live demo, um, then uh, five to three to five minutes on the Q&A. Uh, let's like, uh, I'm assuming that everyone is uh, familiar with uh, HPA, but let me refresh. So HPA, uh, the horizontal part of auto scaling is a mechanism for auto, uh, automatically scaling the number of pod replicas in Kubernetes cluster so that it dynamically scale an application based on the current metrics. So, there's no the speaker now. Okay, so during each time period, the HPA controller manager queries resource utilization based on the metric specified in each HPA definition. The controller manager identifies the target resources defined by the uh, uh, defined by the scale target reference, and selects the paths based on spec selector labels from the target resource, and retrieve the metrics from either the resource uh, metrics API or the custom metrics API. Here is an example. Okay, example of uh, HPA. So you can see that the, the number of the replicas of this uh, PHP Apache deployments, um, the number of replicas will be increased or decreased um, to maintain the average of uh, 50% of CPU utilization, which means the number of the replicas will be scaled up or scaled down if the uh, Average, uh, average CPU utilization is above or below uh, 50%. Uh, HPA, we're going to HPA works perfect in a single cluster. When we're thinking about like multi clusters, uh, uh, how can we handle auto scaling across clusters? So um, here list a bunch of benefits, and uh, oh, uh, we can so. Uh, we can have a unified management of auto scaling operations across clusters that can reduce the operation uh, redundant and also break through the, uh, the resource limitation of a single clusters. For example, there are uh, massive requests coming through in a short period of time and we run out of like, for example, the instance. And also uh, uh, to meet like different scenarios, we would like to have a variety, uh, variety strategies that can scale the workload uh, across like multiple clusters, not only by like the cluster name. And the, the scenarios can be um, like disaster recovery, like the cluster level of a scaling for disaster recovery. Also, you can thinking about like other scenarios like cost efficiency, something like that. Um, but how can we achieve that? Um, Kamada can help you with that. Let me take a moment to uh, introduce Kermada. So it is a Kubernetes management system that enables the cloud native application across multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters and clouds. It has a bunch of capabilities listed here. So um, I'm gonna start from the first one. It is a, a Kubernetes native API capability compatible, so it speaks directly to the Kubernetes native API, so, which means you don't have to make any change to your current uh, applications. And it's open and naturally, uh, open means it's an um, open source tool. Um, recently, a couple of months ago, it, it, it has been moved from a um, sandbox project into incubation. It, uh, it avoids the vendor lock-in, uh, so uh, it has integration with majority of the cloud providers. Uh, it also um, 
provide the building policies to set for the scenarios like active active, remote disaster recovery, and geo redundant. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, it has variety of fruitful scheduling policies like a cluster affinity, multi-cluster splitting, rebalancing, a multi-dimension uh, HA, like uh, multi-dimension highly availability across the regions, AZs, clusters, and cloud providers. Uh, it also offers like centralized management. By saying that, we're going to move to the next slide. It shows like how Kamada looks like. Uh, on your right, it shows that the Kamada control plan is more look like Kubernetes native, uh, Kubernetes uh, control plan. So it has a Kamada API server. It has a Kamada controller, a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of controllers managed by the controller manager. A Kamada scheduler also has a SCD sits as a as a, a database as a data store, so you can um, store all the objects. And the members, like each individual Kubernetes clusters, can be joined to this control plan, and at their like at their uh, push mode or pull mode. Uh, on the right, it shows like the Kamada workflow. As I mentioned before, um, Kubernetes native um, native API cap capabilities. So it used the resource template exactly the same with um, the Kubernetes APIs. So, and let's move down a bit. Uh, the propagation policies, the, the user designed for how the workload be pro propagate to the member clusters. With that, the uh, policy controller gonna uh, bind those uh, propagations with the resources accordingly. And after those resource binding generated, the, the bind controller gonna take the override policy to do a JSON patch to the resource spending and generate the work objects into the specific namespace. And the um, propagation controller will take the actual propagation to the member cluster. Uh, this is more like a before and after. So before we using Kramada, uh, uh, it's more like an um, end user or something that I'll manually deploy each deployment to each member cluster. So a lot of like an engineer toil or duplicate operations. But after we use Kramada, uh, it offers like a unified or centralized uh, control plane. So uh, all those uh, all those like workloads can be propagated to the right member clusters based on the propagation policy you set. So it's more like a one step instead of the redundant operations. But you may ask, like, everybody have a perfect like CI/CD pipeline to handle all those work for me? Like, I'm not like manually deploy all those stuff. But Kamada also offers the workload propagation policy. So, oh. Advanced policies, so not only based on the cluster name, it can like based on the labels, the field, tent, and tolerant, and also topology and available resources. So let's take an example on the uh, topology and available resources. On the left, it shows like in uh, most of the uh, workload uh, are scheduled to like zone X and maybe less workload schedule on zone Y, and you can define all those in your propagation policy. Uh, on the left, it shows that the workload is scheduled on the cluster member two in the middle because it has more CPU. So it kind of makes sense, right? It, we have uh, instance, reserved instance, like in AWS, uh, we have a reserved instance and we want to take fully usage of those instance. So we scheduled more workload there. And for those like last CPUs available in the cluster member one, in cluster member three, we just schedule less workload. It's more uh, cost efficiency. 
And I've been talking a lot about propagation policy. How does it look like? This is an example. It shows like how we propagate the Nginx deployment. You can see there is a cluster affinity and, de and it's defined like this deployment is gonna be propagated to cluster member one and cluster member two with the propagation, uh, with the replica uh, division reference as weighted the last two lines over there. So uh, it can be like static divided, like we just have static uh, members like one or two. It also uh, offers like dynamic weighted. So you can define it like based on the available resources. Uh, there is um, under that, the last line is a replica scheduling type. Uh, there are currently two types available. One is duplicated, uh, the other one is divided. Uh, we're gonna, in the demo, we're gonna use the divided. Uh, but duplicated, you can think about when you're doing a blue-green migration and things like that. During the, during the migration, you wanna have the workloads existing on both clusters. And uh, I just, I, I, I don't think I covered all those policies. Uh, there's a URL at the bottom that you can uh, visit uh, to the Kamada website. Uh, there's more detailed information there. The other scenario I would like to mention is uh, the cross-cluster application failover. Uh, on the right, so there are three member clusters uh, registered to the control plan, and one of them like is in trouble. Like maybe the API uh, connection, maybe the API connection like uh, cut off or like something you can imagine. Like all of a sudden the member one is unavailable, it's not ready, and it's, uh, it will be detected by the the cluster controller with the discovery failure and the workload on the member one will be automatically scheduled to the other available clusters. So it's gracefully and migrate ensure uninterrupted service. All right, I've already covered the, the first uh, topics and then I'm gonna hand over to Xingyan. He will walk you through uh, the Kamada features, federated HPA and uh, Crown federated HPA. Okay, okay. thank you. And, and let's begin. And as we well know, when we want to use our resource in Kubernetes, we should first look at the API definition of that resource. So now I will introduce federated HPA. As you can see, the federated HPA is consistent with the Kubernetes native HPA. For example, the spec field is very similar to the uh, Kubernetes negative HPA. Um, they, both, they both have fields such as uh, mean replicas, max replicas, matrix behavior, and so on. And so you, you can also see that the matrix field here reference the fields of negative HPA Okay, so how can we use federated HPA? And let's take a close look at how to migrate. Um, as I described earlier, the federated HPA is very similar to the uh, native HPA. So if you have any experience using a negative HPA, you can easily work with federated HPA as well. Uh, for example, uh, on our left uh, is negative HPA, on our right is federated HPA. You can see that uh, the two examples only differ in API version and can't. Uh, therefore, you, you don't need to, to make any change to your existing HPA spec field. Okay. Uh, this is very important. Uh, so how can, so let's uh, see how, how it works. The Kemana, the federated HPA controller on the control plane obtain metrics of the deployment uh, through the Kemana metrics adapter and uh, 
the dynamically scales the number of replicas of de deployments. And then Kemana scheduler will schedule this Leoni edit replicas to different member clusters, for example, member one and member two, uh, and based on the scheduling, sch scheduling policies uh, specified by the user in the propagation policies. Uh, in has early introduced a propagation policy. So uh, this uh, enables cost cluster auto scanning. Okay. Uh, the federated HPA controller is located in the Kemana controller management component. It queries metrics from Kemana API server and uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, scales the uh, replicas of deployments accordingly. And then Kemana API server queries Kemana metrics adapter. And, and then the Kemana metrics adapter Queries the member, the member metrics, uh, queries the metrics server of member clusters uh, to obtain metrics or customer metrics, uh, and then aggregates them and uh, finally returns them to Kemana API server. Uh, so you can see that uh, the federated HPA emulates the me mechanism of negative HPA. Okay, uh, with the latest uh, version of Kemana releasing, uh, there is a new API, Chrome Federated HPA. Uh, it is primarily used for scenario like, uh, if there is a traffic spike every day at 19 a.m., uh, I would like to proactively scale up uh, the related servers or hand of time, for example, 30 minutes uh, before to handle the peak load and uh, ensure interruptibility availability. Okay, and, and other scenario like to schedule database migration jobs on weekends. Okay, in, in general, uh, Chrome for the rated HPA is used for regular auto scanning actions. It can scale workloads not to have a uh, scale sub resource or federated HPA. And let's take a look at uh, the two examples of Chrome federated HPA. On the left, we have an example of schedule scanning for federated HPA. Uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, includes a schedule field for writing Chrome table expressions and uh, uh, target the mean webcast field. Uh, on our right, we have an example of schedule scanning for uh, deployment. Uh, it also includes a, a schedule field uh, for writing cron table expressions and a target, and a target webcast field. Okay, so when the specified time arrives, the cron Federated HPA controller will trigger a scale up or a scale down actions, allowing uh, you to proactively scale up or down your deployment. Okay. Uh, Kemana implements Chrome for the HPA as a control loop, not uh, periodically checks the Chrome schedule time. If the schedule time is reached, uh, it uh, scales the Workloads, webcast, or federated HPA mean webcast or max, max webcast. Uh, so you can see that uh, the Chrome federated HPA uh, working mechanism is very simple. Okay. And as I described earlier, uh, Chrome, uh, Chrome federated which HPA can scanning workloads with a scale sub resource and the scanning federated HPA. And so let's take a look at the consideration for usage. Uh, in general, it is important to uh, ensure that the scanning operations uh, uh, performed by Chrome federated HPA uh, do not conflict with any other ongoing 
uh, scanning operations. And so it is recommended to first use Chrome Federated HPA to scale Federated HPA, and then Federated HPA can scale workloads based on their metrics. Um, and then let's take a look at the advantage and the notice of Chrome Fed HPA, uh, uh, Federated HPA. Uh, advantages, the API and the Kubernetes na native HPA are almost identical uh, with the same user experience and uh, low migration cost. And notice, uh, Federated HPA is a type of the center. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh. Uh, uh, um, oh. oh, okay, okay. Federated Feder Feder HPA is a type of the uh, centralized multi cluster HPA. Uh, when you're scanning concurrently on a larger scale, a larger bandwidth is required. And the uh, storing and then computing corresponding data uh, requires much CPU and memory. Okay. Uh, in the face of some shortcomings of federated HPA, the command community is exploring a new API, distributed HPA, uh, which introduces uh, an agent in member clusters. It, it will list and watch uh, distributed HPA and uh, calculate, calculate the intermediate states. And then the intermediate states will be updated to the status fields of distributed HPA, and then Kemada calculates the uh, final result and adjusts the number of replicas uh, based on intermediate data, intermediate data rec reported by the agents in the member cluster. Uh, okay, uh, currently this design under discussing, so you are welcome to join us. All right, let's, uh, let's take a quick demo before we move to the takeaways. So in the demo, we're gonna show you how we use uh, Kamada to um, propagate the workload to the member clusters. We're gonna have three cl uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, uh, in local, one gonna be a host, gonna be the host where the Kamada control plane gonna lives. So this um, on the on the right terminal, uh, oh sorry, right terminals, and those are two separate individual uh, Kubernetes cluster will be joined as member cluster. But currently, and uh, in those member clusters, uh, uh, they're done. They're not. Uh, they're not joined yet, uh, but as a pre-request, uh, the metric server has been deployed to those member clusters. Yeah, we have set up the Kamada on the uh, Kubernetes cluster. All right, let's do the join. Using Kamada CTL, you can see both uh, both member cluster has been jo have been joined to Kamada successfully, and when are gonna get the cluster, it can show that the status of those clusters they are ready, which means they're ready to be propagated. And then we are gonna deploy a simple nginx application. So you can see the replic set to two, and. Then we apply this deployment to Kamada. Create it. But uh, I would like to, if you want to get the pod. Get pod. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's no like workload on the control plan or um, either of the member cluster because we don't have the propagation policy set up. And after we, uh, yeah, let's take a look how the publication policy looks like. It has, uh, it defined like the uh, 
how we schedule the replicas is weighted and one in each member clusters and it's divided. So we are expecting to see like one replica in each member cluster. Let's apply this and you can see on the right, there are replicas. Cool. And you may see that And then we apply the federated HBA. And let's take a look what it looks like. Uh, it defined the minimum replicas as one and the maximum replicas as 10. Uh, with the scale down and scale up, the time is 10, 10 seconds. With the CPU utilization set as like 10%. So we are expecting to see maybe one of the, oh, it disappeared. Maybe one of the, one of the replica disappeared because there's no like, load, actual load or traffic into this Nginx application. All right, we've, we've logged in to uh, one of the member cluster and we do a log generator using uh, AB, the Apache bench. So is the command, it shows like in within 20 seconds, we're gonna make uh, generate 10,000 of the concurrent. And we are expecting to see more replicas spin up in the member clusters and evenly, which means like maybe one, one, one or two, two. Okay, three, three. Is it three, two? All right, you can see the difference is because it's uh, automatically uh, calculate based on the available resources. Maybe in the member one, we have uh, more available resources, but uh, all those three clusters are generated by kind. Uh, it's all local. And the load generator is completed. And we may see that the replicas will be scheduled down within a couple of seconds. Well, a couple of seconds means like 10, 20 seconds. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, that is the end of demo. Let, let, let's move back to our slides. So I wanna take a quick moment to recap. Uh, for the key takeaways, here is the regular HPA cannot break through the cluster boundaries to out of scale the workloads, but the federated HPA and the Chrome federated HPA can help you with that. And Kermada is an open source tool that enable you to run your cloud native application across multiple Kubernetes clusters and clouds. So I would encourage everyone to uh, give Kermada a try and see how it fits in your use case or scenarios. Uh, here are the links, uh, the Kermada doc, the GitHub Ripple, and we have a, a Slack channel uh, named Kermada, and you are more than welcome to join us. Thank you so much. Right. Um, thank you so much for listening. And I, I just want to give a, a shout out to the Kamada contributors and maintainers. You're awesome. And we are appreciate your feedback. Uh, please scan this QR code above to leave feedbacks for us. And yeah, we're, we still have like a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm happy, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes. Oh, the question was, uh, uh, so the Dow Cloud is currently using Kamada. I'm going to let Xinyan to answer those questions. Okay. Uh, we can discuss offline. Uh, yeah. A short answer is yes. Yeah, I got this correct answer. Yeah, but we can discuss the more details like offline. Awesome. The gentleman over there. Yes, so um, we saw how you were able to scale your workloads across multiple clusters as traffic came in. But my question is, how are you handling ingress? Because, you know, once, once workload scales out to another cluster, your ingress endpoint is still on cluster A. But now you've got, you've, you've got a workload running on cluster B, but no traffic's necessarily going to that. 
So how are you handling that problem with uh, Kermata? So if I understand it correctly, it's, uh, the question is when the, the ingress of a, a single cluster is coming in, uh, the traffic is in, but we've scheduled the workload on the other member cluster, is that correct? Right, right. And without something like GSOB, I mean, I'm wondering how, how, that, how that effectively scales across multiple clusters. Can you answer those questions? It's more like underlying, like networking, setting yeah. up. Right, right. I yeah. mean, there, there has to be like a networking part to it. Okay, so uh, as far as I know, the underlying uh, network, uh, uh, the best practice is to using Submariner. So all those clusters, all the underlying, uh, all those member clusters are using Submariner so they can be like talk to each other and handling the traffic across the cluster. That's more like assumption of that. But uh, if you have more concerns, uh, uh, like we can discuss like offline okay. and see your use case or, or uh, you can open an issue for us in the repo. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit you all up in the chat, uh, Slack, Slack room. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Oh, the next gentleman. So in your, in your examples, you're using the default namespace? Yes. If we have custom namespaces with custom resource quotas and limits and policies, do we have to create that names that namespace with all of our resource cluster resource quotas and everything across all the clusters, or uh, do we that, do that at the, your top level um, Karmata and it just creates that namespace across all the clusters? Oh, uh, I got you. Uh, I, uh, if I understand correctly, your answer uh, your question is uh, when we're using Karmata, how it generate the namespace exactly. in uh, in the control plan? Is that is that yes, in, in yes. the control plan? Yes. When we uh, deploy the, the de uh, one way to uh, apply the deployment, it will generate a default namespace in the Karmata control plan. And after we apply the propagation policy, it will generate the uh, specified namespace in the control plan, like starting with Karmata-ES, and it installed all those uh, work objects. And it, it, it's, it's the format is, is uh, el, uh, the Karmata dash es dash cluster name dash the namespace that you specify in your YAML file. Gotcha. And yeah. it, it carries well, we over show, all the you, we resource quotas and everything quick. else are carried across all the, the next cluster that it propagates to? Yes. Okay. And it, it will create all the namespace uh, in all those member clusters. I think you can see from there. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That, that we should show that in our demo, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, cool. I hope you uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yes? I have one question related to the... Uh, Sorry, I cannot hear you. Hello. I have one question related to federated HPA. Does uh, it support external metrics like Datadog or any other Prometheus metrics? Sorry, I still didn't hear yeah, you. The federated HPA, does it support external metrics other than External the metrics. metrics. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, I think we offer external metrics. Uh, it'll be a Prometheus. Like, can you use them with Prometheus? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can offer that uh, metrics for monitoring, yes. I think there is a session in the website and show that how we man monitoring alerting based on those metrics. Not only for the HPA or federated HPA, but in general, there are uh, metrics available. Cool. Yeah, thanks for your question. Yeah. I have the same question, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, what happens in a network partition where your control cluster doesn't have access to the other clusters anymore? So the question was, what happens if the network is like in trouble? Uh, if, there's a, if there's an outage in the outage. network between your control cluster that's managing the federated HPAs and the remote clusters, what happens to the federated, the, the HPAs running in the federated clusters? Oh, the question was, what if like one of the member cluster lost no, a connection? what if the control cluster oh, the control to oh. the remote clusters? Oh, I got you. So the question was, sorry about that. Oh, the question was about how we handle if the commodity control plan is unavailable. So oh, if, the, if the control plane can't connect to the remote clusters, they're happily doing their thing. The remote clusters are working. Yes. But, it, but the control plane can no longer talk to them. Uh, uh, we cannot answer your question at the moment because we. Uh, 
Like, so I'm assuming that all those uh, uh, workloads were like running happily on each member right, cluster slot. It would, it would just stop scaling? Yes, self-scaling. So it would no longer scale in or scale out? It would just run at a steady state? Yes, I'm assuming that you have your HPA set up in the each member clusters. Yes. It will, it, the HPA are going to hand, handling all of those uh, uh, pod auto scaling in each member clusters. Uh, I'm hoping to answer your question, sir. If you, uh, if I didn't, uh, feel free to like open. I, I was specifically each. asking about the distributed ones. Distributed? Like, where, because it looked like the, the example you just ran. If cluster two, if cl the control cluster couldn't connect to cluster two anymore, would it just not schedule any more workloads on there? Oh, oh. Uh, uh, to be clear, so those the, the member to cluster still register as a member cluster to the Kamada control plan, right? Right. Be because if we unjoin, it's going to delete all the workload from member two. Right, but not an unjoin, just like uh, the network goes Network through. issue, the, yeah. Uh, uh, undersea cable gets cut or something. Yeah, the workload is going to be still like running it uh, inside a single uh, member clusters. But in the central, the federated HPA cannot work, cannot scheduling those workload across the clusters. It lost the control. Right. But so it doesn't affect the work. running? Yes. But they would not scale in or out? No, uh, yes, without scheduling across the cluster, but it, they can be like running in a single cluster. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, you, you had a slide that showed um, when you would, uh, when, when your control cluster lost connection to, uh, to one of the member clusters, that it would migrate the workload to, to one of the working clusters. Uh, how, were you, how would you be able to migrate the workload if you've lost? if the control cluster has lost the connection to the member cluster. Okay, the question is, uh, there is a slide showing that we lost uh, the connectivity between the, uh, but to be clear, it's not a connection between uh, uh, the control plane to, the, to each of the member clusters, just only one of to the member clusters. one cluster. of them, and yes, it showed you would migrate that workload to a new cluster. Yes. Um, but uh, I'm curious, how would you do the migration to, uh, because you don't have access to that cluster anymore? So, yes. So how would you shut down that workload on the cluster you can't reach to, cr to create that on the new cluster or on the working cluster? Okay, I got your question. So, so the question is more like the, the, the whole cluster, the workloads you're running on the bad clusters. Yeah. And we just auto scale the workloads with the other member clusters, how we're gonna handle this situation. Uh, but what we're trying to explain is that cluster is in trouble, so the workload disappeared. And it's based on the feature gate, which is the enable failover. So it's automatically uh, scheduling to the other member clusters. Um, okay, so it may schedule some, some, some new workloads while yeah. the workloads on the cluster you can't reach anymore might still be. Yeah, there. we're just assuming that cluster is down and the yeah. workloads cannot handle any traffic. I see. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you for your question.